Hello, everybody, and welcome to our hurricane conversation. Ron Mason, Clark Twitty in Kerala. And the topic today is hurricanes. Not are they coming. Inevitably, they will. It's the question of how do we position not only our mental models, but also your home to be resilient in the face of rumors of hurricanes and hurricanes. Ron, you've done this for a long time. Most of our homeowners have read this year's forecast. The quote is extraordinary, an 85% chance, according to NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, of a remarkable hurricane season. That's due to a combination, you may have read, very warm ocean temperatures, the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific, Lots of wind shear modeling, candidly, some things I don't quite understand, but anytime we hear extraordinary and hurricane, our ears pop up. But having said this, we've done it for a long time. Ron, you've done this now for almost a quarter of a century, not to date you. We won't say it's long experience. We'll say it's a very rich experience relative to storm planning. How should we think about our homes and hurricanes? Thanks, Clark. And it's true whenever you see the information in the hurricane advisory that we send out, this year is forecast to be possibly record-breaking. Now, like Clark said, I've been doing this long enough, and you've been doing this long enough to know sometimes forecasts are accurate, sometimes they're not. But the bottom line is it only takes one storm to really put a dent in your budget and to cause of a lot of excitement on the Outer Banks that we would rather be buffered from. We really have not had a busy season in s- probably since 2016 when we had three hurricanes in three months. So we've been pretty lucky. Most of the damages we've had of recent years are more in the wintertime with ocean events, people losing steps, a lot of dune loss, that kind of thing. So really, we are overdue for a busy hurricane season. And with that in mind, we put out every year the hurricane planning advisory with some information regarding storm water remediation and links to our vendor resource guide. There is a lot of good info in there. If you're an experienced homeowner, long standing with Twitty, you likely have read it multiple times. If you're a newer homeowner and possibly new to this whole hurricane season thing, It is a valuable source of information. It tells you what we can do, what we probably cannot do, what you should do, and what you should keep in mind as the season progresses. So whenever you do receive that, and it'll be going out here in a matter of days, I encourage you to read it. Certainly, if you have any questions, you can contact me directly. There are, you know, there's invaluable information in there for you. And Ron, I'm glad you brought that up. I tend to think hurricane season starts June 1st. I remember the last event we had, kind of Dorian, Hurricane Dorian, late 2019, right before the pandemic. The arrival of the pandemic kind of crowds out that memory. We got a glancing blow on the northern Outer Banks. The destruction on Ocracoke was tremendous. Um, I happened to be working for the Community Foundation at that time and had a chance to see it. It was destruction. So having said that, we love models. I I love the way you tend to think about planning relative to a checklist, particularly some trigger events, mandatory versus voluntary evacuation. That's not only a revenue trigger, but it's also a staff trigger for us. You're a Marine. I tend to think five Ps, and I know Marines might have more than five Ps. Prior planning prevents poor performance. You have a four P as in PAPA model for hurricanes. Talk to us about that. So really there's, in my mind, there's four pillars to a personal storm plan. And regardless of all the information we put out, this this is something that you can build your personal plan on. And the first part of that is plan. Now planning, as you see in the advisory, we talk about making sure you have the proper insurances and things like that. Now, to be covered for wind and wind-related damages, truth be told, that is by far the most expensive coverage you're going to have. So I'd be really surprised if you don't know that you have it, because every time I get the bill, I roll my eyes. So you do want to make sure you have that if you have somebody else handle all your financials. So 
wind and wind-related damage is very important. The second part of planning in my mind is being proactive. If you come to your home several times over the past several years and you are sure that a cat has been roaming around in your home because of the smell, that's just not true. What is more likely true is that you have windows and or sliders that are allowing wind-driven rain to get in, around, or beneath. That's something that you've been aware of. Take action as you can. If you have open weeks, hopefully you don't have open weeks. But if you do, you might have one of your contractors or vendors go out there, look for the source of that moisture, and address it now before you have five times that amount of moisture coming in. The second P, as it were, in this personal plan is preparing. Now, really, we're going to do most of the preparing for you, and depending on whether the guests are present or have been evacuated, we're going to help educate the guests on what they can do to prepare your home for any given storm event. So a lot of that information is in the advisory, and I won't repeat it here, but one thing I do want to say in this preparation phase is if you do not use Twitty and Company for your pool and spa vendor, contact that vendor and ensure that they know that they're aware they are responsible for the staging of the pool furniture, umbrellas, things like that, and also putting storm straps on the hot tub covers. If you're familiar at all with GMRP, it's very clear in there that acts of God are not covered. And if the hurricane isn't by definition an act of God, I don't know what it is. So if your hot tub cover blows down the street, they'll come looking for $500, $600, $700. Please make sure that your pool vendor knows that that is one of their responsibilities. The third pillar is just monitoring the storm. You know, monitor the weather authorities. Uh, the Weather Channel for all of the drama is a valuable thing to watch. I watch it all the time. I actually saw Jim Cantori in Key West one time, so it's not like I'm a groupie, but <laughs> hey, he has good information. We don't want to see him here. Another source is AccuWeather. There are many social media feeds for better or for worse, that provide a lot of good storm information. NOAA is a valuable resource regarding that. And also monitor the communications from us. Uh, Clark, Katie, the, the entire team will be putting forth information during the storm, leading up to the storm, during the storm, and after the storm. So that may be by Facebook, maybe by text blasts, emails, owner portal postings. Just keep a track on what we're saying, and you can uh, play along from the safety of your home, wherever that may be. Finally, the fourth pillar is assessing following the storm. We are going to be doing the storm damage assessment to the extent possible. If there is an evacuation, you know, it gets a little bit different. If there's an evacuation, you can possibly come in or call your insurer and have them do an assessment. If guests are present, generally we defer to the fact that guests are present. So we will look at everything that we can before they come back on the beach or if they're already here. We'll respond to reports of moisture, wind-driven rain, shingle damage, whatever the case may be. Things are different, quite frankly, when guests are here and when guests have been evacuated. When guests are here, we are not going to put down storm shutters. We're not going to let your guy come and board up the windows, which is a bad idea to begin with. We're not going to do those things with guests present in the house. If you do those things after an evacuation is called, we're not going to put guests back in your home until those uh, occurrences have been reversed. So just keep that in mind if you do take those uh, extraordinary steps. And, uh, you know, I think the uh, government authorities have learned over the years the wisdom of allowing us to do what we need to do before they let guests back on the beach. I recall Hurricane Isabel 2003. I'm fielding calls because somebody's grill propane is empty. Meanwhile, we're trying to figure out which house was missing half their shingles. So I think the government has learned a little bit. And certainly, I'm sure Clark has been in touch with them 
and other authorities as well. So really, that's the four pillars, planning, preparation, monitoring, and assessment. Ron, I love that model. From an emotional standpoint, my experience has been that the most frustrating component of a storm is wanting to know what happened after the storm has left. We tend to be impatient. Reentry is problematic on a good day. Would you agree with that, or has your experience been different? I would agree with that. And I think, you know, having been down here for 23 years and Isabel being my first blown, uh, first full blown hurricane, that's trial by fire. I think there has been a lot of improvements up and down the beach regarding surface flooding, things like that. Whalehead has done multiple projects over the years. Whalehead used to flood all the time. I've lost more than one set of brake calipers driving down the streets in Whalehead after storms. But now it's very spotty, very limited, and very low scale. So we are evolving. And you know, whatever your personal opinions are of climate change, the weather events just evidenced by last night's thunderstorm, the weather events are becoming more uh, intense, for lack of a better phrase. So, you know, it's highly unlikely that Hurricane Katrina is coming this way. But a Category 1 or a Category 2 can do just as much damage in this region as a 5 does in the Panhandle of Florida. So, you know, ultimately, the big concerns here are wind-driven rain and, you know, shingle loss or siding loss. You know, that, that would be the two areas. Thank you very much for being here today. If you've got a question for Ron and would like to talk about what triggers evacuations, what triggers re-entries, how we think about assessing homes, any of that, I know Ron is a wonderful resource. Ron, thank you for working so hard. The hurricane advisory isn't something you download from the internet. You are the author of it in many cases. So this is highly experienced commentary sharing with you. Ron, thank you for what you do. Thank you for watching. Here's to knock on wood. A quiet hurricane season, but we also know the way to get a quiet season is to prepare as well as we possibly can. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the beach.